Hi, my name is Louis Bielman, and Alien Buddha Press is publishing my uh, new collection of short stories. It's called uh, uh, The Lives of Animals, Modern Fairy Tales and Fables. Uh, just showing you the nice cover they put together. Uh, the book is available on Amazon, and uh, it's got seven stories in it. Uh, again, I call it Modern Fairy Tales and Fables, and I'm going to read to you from the first one in the collection. It's called The Gator and the Ibis. Uh, it's a short story about 10 to 12 pages long. I'm going to read for about five, uh, five minutes or so. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, so let's get started. Again, the, book, the story is called The Gator and the Ibis. Back then, I used to escape to the Everglades. On my way to the old Aerojet Road on the outskirts of Homestead, I'd stop at the Robert is Here fruit stand, buy a mango shake and beef jerky, get back in my car, and dust past the corrections facility. It was the same routine every time. Since the Aerojet Road was gated to prevent people from driving in and looting the deserted rocket factory, I would park outside the gate and walk the road alongside the canal until I came to a narrow clearing a few hundred yards in. It didn't matter what, whether the air wobbled with humidity, mosquitoes attacked my extremities, or a swift winter breeze kicked at me from across Florida Bay. I was there any time of the year, whenever I felt the need to leave the concrete towers and gated neighborhoods of South Florida behind. Jack, at least that's how I knew him, seemed to sense when I was coming and would greet me immediately. As soon as he saw me move through the clearing and cut down the bank, I'd hear the cackle, crackle across the canal, see the sawgrass part, and catch him tumbling snout first into the water. Sunlight glistened on his back, and his rose-white teeth contrasted with his black eyes and gray scales as he swam toward me. Once he had crossed the canal, he'd use his stubby front legs to work his 12-foot body up the bank, and then splaying his front legs out, adjust them one after the other to turn his thick body around and sidle up beside me. He loved to tell variations on human jokes, and the first one I remember him telling me was a bad rip off of a peanut joke. What happened to the flayed piece of beef when it wandered away from the cow, he said. I shrugged my shoulders. It got assaulted, he continued laughing. Get it like a piece of beef jerky. That's how I got the idea to bring in beef jerky whenever I came to visit. I'd break them into two-inch pieces and drop them in his mouth. His jaw would, jaw would snap shut around the meat, and with the upper rows of its teeth exposed, he'd move his head up and down, open his mouth again, and wait for the next piece. Then, after I was through feeding him, he'd tell a story. Nothing too exciting, usually mostly a recounting of his day, about how he wrestled with an upstart bull, bellowed at a female gator that swam by, or crushed a soft-shell turtle in his vice-like maw. I didn't say much. I knew he liked to get stuff off his belly, and his voice, which sounded oddly like Jimmy Durante's, delighted me. Plus, not wanting to dwell on my quotidian struggle, I had little to say about my day. If I were to contribute anything, I would bring a book along and read aloud to Jack. Over the year or so we spent together, I learned that he enjoyed the classics and felt a special affinity for Shakespeare and lyric poetry. At some point last spring, however, Jack's stories began to change. Instead of his normal tales of alligator bravado, he told a darker, more introspective tale about things like a tree island piled with alligator bones a bull who devoured his young, and the many doomed lovers of the animal kingdom. It was the latter subject that got my attention. Otherwise, I would have thought Jack was merely worrying about the long-term effects of the recent drought on his habitat. But there was something else there. At first, I thought that a particularly ravishing alligator may have spurned his advances. But the way he talked about love and hopelessness made me think there was more to it. Then, one day in May, he asked me if I wanted to see the woman he loved. I told him, sure, and began to follow him. He splashed into the water, 
and I stepped ankle deep into the shallows of the canal shelf. As I slogged along, he slid his tail back and forth beneath the water surface to propel himself forward and to stay close to the bank. He led the way south for about a hundred yards until he reached an area across from a patch of mangroves and stopped. Jack tilted his head and pointed his snout toward the opposite bank of the canal. You see her over there, he said. I looked at the water in that direction, but didn't see anything. No, not yet, I said. Is she underwater? No, look higher. I scanned the sawgrass on the bank. Squinting, I struggled to detect a snout and black eyes peeking from be between the stiff blades. Maybe I'm missing something. I said, I don't see anything over there other than that inhinga drying its wings. It's getting warmer, he said. Keep looking, but higher. Puzzled, I peered up, the, up the, into the mangrove branches. What gator can climb a tree, I wondered. I became suddenly afraid, thinking there might be swarms of greater, gators less friendly than Jack, lingering in treetops, ready to pounce on unexpected wanderers like me. Still, I saw nothing other than a white ibis watching us from one of the mangroves. Jack, I don't see anything other than that ibis there, I said. Am I missing something? Jack looked at me forlornly, or as close to forlornly as an alligator can look. You see her then, he said. Isn't she beautiful? I'll leave it at that for, for now, and um, I hope you enjoyed the, the little taste there and um, would like to hear more. As I said before, the, the book is called The Lives of Animals, and it's available on Amazon. And if you want to read the rest of that story and a few more, yeah, feel free to go there and purchase it. I believe it's um, available for $12.95. Uh, and thanks again to Alien Buddha Press for giving me this opportunity. Bye-bye.